Hey, Joe. Hi. Hey, Joe. What are we doing today? Hi there, campers. It's... 1727. Yeah, 1727 hours, Thursday, June 25, and we got booms. For the radio station, so that we don't have to have annoying microphones. I should stand the other way because because lighting. Cause lighting. Not David Fincher. We're audio guys. Um. So yeah, I forget who sent these in. Massive H. Massive H. Massive H always sends wonderful stuff in. Yeah, yeah, Massive H is is awesome. Yes. He's our hero. He also follows me on Twitter, so he's my favorite person in the IRC because he's the only one that does that. Um, so, editor, what? I mean, I don't, I don't do Twitter. Yeah. I don't do Twitter. I ain't no twit. So, Ed here is going to, um, show everybody who doesn't know how to solder and help us get the cables in the booms so that we can use them. Right now what I'm doing is we're using previously owned connectors and when they take these things out of the service they just cut the wires. So I am removing the old wire and preparing the connectors for some awesome Canary Star Quad. Star Quad. Star Quad. Not Quad Star. What's the wire saying? Maybe Chris is wrong. Wrong. You really think the manufacturer got it wrong? Crazier things have happened. The dude what invented GIF got, got it wrong. Oh. But we got a pretty yellow cable. And I've already prepared at home. And it comes with a clamp to put on the table. Say that again about the base part. This is the base. It goes here. And that clamps to the table like so. So, we're going to probably have, how, how much wire do you think you're going to need to come from the back of this to your mixer? Oh, three feet? I'd, I'd rather have more if we're going to... Okay, so six feet. Yeah, five. six feet. Whatever you say, I'm going to double it. Okay. <laughs> 20 feet. Screw you. You're, this stuff is like a fifty a foot. <laughs> Well, you vowed to double it, so... The whole I'm going to double your honest answer. <laughs> your honest answer was three, so you're getting six. Fair so, enough. So, I'm just going to unwrap a healthy amount of cable and start fishing it through. Fish, fish, fish. Fish, fish, fish. So we start off by coming through here. Now there's a hole right there. Ultimately, the wire is going to come out of there. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to start by running it through there. But I can't grab the cable because this is really thick cable. And it's being a pain. That's normal. There we go. For what I think will be an ample supply through, just got to make, yeah, that's going to be more than enough. And now we just fish it through. It's going to be nice and pretty and functional. So pretty. So we bring this up through here, pull it all out. I'm going to feel like a real live disc jockey after this. It does feel good. Have you actually been on a real live radio station? Yes. Once. Well, that wasn't a uh, community college? Yes. Okay. It was State my university. State-funded university. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it was not a community college. Have you ever been on one that was corporately owned? No. That I have not. <laughs> Let me get really specific there. There you got it. 
<laughs> oh man. More gold. Ooh. I don't know, that Tijuana brass was really doing it for me. Nothing's topped uh, the Neil Young album yet. That's true. What was it called? Trans, I think. T R A N S. Yeah, anybody who has not listened to Trans by Neil Young. Don't. <laughs> oh no, they need to. Everyone must experience this. Have you ever thought, man, Neil Young's voice is so folksy and melodic and lilting. You know what he really needs to do is run it through a Daft Punk style vocoder. Yes. That's the whole album. Well, not the whole album. It's actually ingenious. The first song of every side is like a, just a standard Neil Young song. So when you're testing it out, it's like, oh, uh, yeah, this is a pretty good song. I can get into this. <laughs> and then you bring the record home. <laughs> and then you listen to track two. <laughs> and then you're disappointed. <laughs> And then you're sad. <laughs> I've tried more tears of laughter than tears of joy. There, there are tears of sadness. Tears of... Like, tried more tears of Cut laughter. Cut your losses, Joe. Cut your losses. Yeah, tears just fucking sadness. give up. No, man. Take two. Give up. Well, don't even take two. Just fucking leave it right there. I'm just going to start calling you take two. Take two, Joe. No, just take two. Okay. Well, or sec or second take. That means people are gonna start calling you that though. No. We might actually distinguish ourselves if we come up with quirky enough names. I'm gonna dye my nicknames. hair and get like tattoos and stuff so that there's no way. <laughs> Just come in next week with like a Mike Tyson esque face tattoo. I'm gonna get the Commander Chakotay tattoo from Star Trek Voyager. Sounds neat. Hear that? That's the sound of the reference going yeah, right over yeah. his head. And here's a, here's a reference that you may not get, but uh, the, why I'm actually laughing really hard inside right now is this morning, for absolutely no reason whatsoever, somebody sent me and I installed a plugin in my computer that changes every instance of the words cloud or the cloud that appears on Google to either butt or my butt. And then I did a search for the cloud, and there is an episode of Star Trek Voyager that was called The Cloud, and it says, the butt. No, it says, my butt was the third episode of season one of Star Trek Voyager. That's great. Okay, so that's fished through. Lovely. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the clamp on it. Give him the clamp. It's, it's Give him the clamp. Clamps. <laughs> Clamps, do your stuff. Just so I can give it a little torque, and I want to make sure that there's going to be enough wire running through it so that it doesn't bind. So Binding, is bad. Binding is bad. Binding makes us sad. So I'm just going to clamp it to the table here. It's not like Binder Park Zoo, which makes us happy. I'm going to stop now. Thank you. So put that in there and make has enough free motion without binding the wire. I want to be able to really run around the studio oh, with yeah. it. Yep, it's still got plenty of motion. In the words of Christopher Walken, I really want to explore the space. Uh, okay, there's not enough there, so we'll actually push some out until I can go all the way back. And then there we go. Plenty of range of motion. That's good. And you got uh, probably not going to need that much wire to connect to your mic. Probably not. So I'll uh, actually pull a little back. That's probably good. All right. And this cable is actually designed for this kind of use. This is Squad Star. This is actually, it's got a, a braided shield instead of an aluminum foil shield. So Which I just recently Googled and learned is much more better. 
It's Why? better. It's better <laughs> it's for gooder. non-permanent installation. Non-permanent installations are, you know, like handheld microphones that move around a lot. Mm. Um, but when it comes to permanent installation, like if I'm going to run a microphone in the building and just have it there for years without touching it, aluminum foil shielding is actually better because it'll give a more solid connection over the years and it's not moving, so you don't have to worry about it breaking. Interesting. Okay, so we're going to measure off roughly six feet, which is my arm length. Let's see here, I need a knife. Just to get rid of that. The lighting in here is so bright. Hmm? The lighting in here is so bright and everything's overexposed. Well, you know, we have you know, overhead lighting, but it probably wouldn't help too much more. I really don't need more light. What you need is more even light, because... Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're actually doing the best thing that you can do in the situation, and that's having your back to the sun. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This site is almost ready. So what have you done? What have I done is I separated the wires. Now what we got to do, is the way this is set up for a single run microphone is we tie both the blues and the whites together. White is hot, blue is cold, and then we have a ground braid that I've twisted. And if we look at the connector, there is three. One, two, and three. Yeah. And just to make sure I get the combination right, I have on my phone. There we go. One, two, and three. Just like an XLR. Hey, what do you know? What do you know? So, going to connections, audio. And the combination is pin one ground, pin two hot. Pin three cold. That was my second guess. Blue is cold. Two is hot, one is ground. So I really need my orange handle bikes. Without destroying the water. And it's all a matter of pressure. Putting the right amount of pressure to get the shielding off without actually cutting into the wire. Done. Before I do anything else to this wire, I need to tin it. Get that out of the way. And before I tin it, I actually need to tie the wires together. So, both the whites, twist them. Both the blues, twist them. And I put them into my and a vice, and then I solder. Grab my iron. I'm back on my screw over here. Some 60-40 solder. Just get it hot. Just so the wires soak up some solder. And this will keep them from fraying, which is a wonderful thing. A lot of solder on the ground. There we go. And remember, if it ain't smoking, you ain't doing it right. Okay, so that's tinned, and now you'll see the wires are solid. And now we gotta do this in. So we simply do the same exact thing. What I'm doing now is scoring the wire. Just the outside shielding, being careful not to cut anything on the inside. If you do it right. And consistently, you should be able to just rip this apart with your bare hands. Bare hands. Or use these for leverage. I only knew one person who had bare hands. They were a bear. You want to do and this a person? <laughs> and a person? <laughs> you want to do this Bears yourself? Well. I, I don't. Oh, no. you, yeah, 
bears are people on the Cleveland show. True. <laughs> and now I just debraid this end. Which debraiding this wire is the most time consuming thing. Clifton Sr. does it a fast way where he actually cuts the braid open at the bottom and just pulls the wires out. I think it looks a little messy. But oh well. I'll do it the long way, it doesn't take that long. So heat everything up. And eventually the wire will just wick up solder and turn it solid. These wires will do it faster, especially if they're heated from both sides because the solder is hot. There we go. Remember kids, don't smoke unless you're using an iron. This camera struggles to focus. Yeah, it does. It has ADD? Yeah. Whoa. So, I've already prepared one connector here. It is female, so it goes on this end, correct? Yeah. Okay. If you say so. I do. So I'm going to take that and clamp it in the pan of ice. That gives me access to all three connectors. And so we have one, two, and then three. So we have ground on this side, hot on this side, and cold on this side. And that is how we start. So move the ground wire around. Move the whites over here, the blues in the middle. And I'm going to need to trim that because the ground ultimately becomes too long because I'm taking mass away from the center of the braid. So, start off with the hot. Just put it up against here, heat it up, hold it, let it cool. Done. Do this one. Done. And last but not least, hey, what rookie mistake did I just make? You didn't put the cover on. So, you heat it up, and the wire will pop right off. <laughs> backtracking, backtracking. At least I didn't get the third I was going to say, that looks a little not correct. So we just put that over it, and now we do it again. <laughs> so, white on this side, heat it up, cool it down. Blue, heat it up, cool it down. Oops, there we go, grabbed. And last but not least, ground. Ground. Okay, so now we have those three connectors, and now we can just take this, put it in the clamp that's so nicely provided. Clamp. And now, Leatherman Ninja. Let me just clamp this down. it from the pan of ice. Careful, because it's going to be hot. Slide it up, and then we put in the screw. And then we do it three more times. Mm -hmm. There we go, that end's done. And we have this end to do. So, that's how you do it. Oh man, that guy just almost just ate it. So, now, the street. so we need a nail. 
Now we do it again with the male end. And then we do it on a second cable. Male is different. Male is different? Male, male actually shudders different than the female. Oh, I have to show it. Just in its structure. See, the female only has one screw. Simple, it locks the whole thing together. Male has three. And this one's actually interesting. Typically, the thread of a screw is a right hand thread. Mm -hmm. These connectors have a left hand thread. And I'll show you where. See, this is a standard right hand thread, so if I turn it to the left, it comes out. But I don't want to take them out all the way. The all those do is hold the cable in place. If I turn this one to the left, it actually sinks in to the connector. Now this one has a few more parts to it. So I put it in my panamas and I heat it up to remove the old wires. Some really old solder in here, so it doesn't want to let go. And it's starting to hurt my hand, getting a little hot. So, that's what's awful. Compensate. Boy, this one is being a real pain. I'm giving it a lot of heat. There we go, Jesus. Every once in a while when a connector is being a pain and it doesn't want to let it go, one way to do it is to actually add solder. And that actually helps move the heat around it will come out easier nifty now we make sure we put all the parts on the damn thing before we solder it it gets a shield just a plastic ring shield There's and the then shield. it gets the connector head connector head actually this is just a cover but it's a little bit, this wire is bigger than the old cable, so we actually need to open up these screws a little more. But once again, you don't want to open them too far because if they fall out, they're a pain in the ass to find. Tighten these screws. There we go. <laughs> is that now, cool? Hmm? It's just chilling down there. Yeah, it's sure. fine. No, I'm an idiot. I had a hunch. I had a, <clears throat> I had a thought. I don't know much, but I had a hunch. So, the cover goes on first. <laughs> yeah, do a fucking vlog, make me look like an idiot. <laughs> and then, this goes inside that. And now, we want to make sure we got our numbers right. If you can't read them on the back, you can read them on the front. One, two, three. One is ground, two is hot, three is cold. This instance, the order is backwards. So, we start here. We apply some heat and drop this connector in the hole. And then we do blue, since it's so close. So this is a time-consuming thing. This one of the things you got to deal with. Here we go, that one's in. And last but not least, and I'm going to turn this. 
Grab it. Grab it. There we go. Get it up on top of that solder ball. When you heat it up, it'll just drop right in. And there we go. And that is soldered. Well, I just pull it down. And then it goes around the connector. And then we pull this up. And we had a cable and a white wire come off. No big deal. We'll just put it back in and solder it again. And why does the male end have a shield to it? Because that's the way they designed it. Okay. The female actually has a shield, but it's actually inset in the connector. Drooping the cable like this is not good, which is why you want to get the kind of cover on it. So it will strain relief. The main reason you want to have the cover, the plastic cover on this, is so nothing can actually touch against the metal casing and short out. Interesting. Now the connector is keyed, so you put it in, put the cover on the right direction. This thing is really hot still. But now you notice there's a little ridge right there on the connector, mm -hmm. and there's a key. Mm -hmm. That's so that the screw, the retaining screw, will actually line up properly. And then you simply take your tool, tool. and when you tighten it, it actually comes out and locks to the inside of the connector. And then these just go down on top of the wire to hold it. Because you'll remember the other end has that clamp around the wire. This one doesn't. Instead, it's got these two screws and there's a piece of rubber in there. Mm -hmm. And that clamps down on the wire to keep it from pulling out. Gotcha. And there we go. And then you just put that in there like that and you're ready to go in the air. Yep, that's, that's the final step. I can't think of anything else that would go in and back. So we got one done, we're going to do another one, and then we'll come back, because it's the same thing for the other one. We'll come back and show you the final product, though, with everything set up in the station. Yeah! GGR! <laughs>